The Physics of Javelin Throwing by Hannah Grinblattis The history of the javelin dates back nearly 3,000 years ago with the Romans. The javelin was originally designed as a defensive weapon and used in favor of the spear as it was lighter and could be thrown rather than thrust, allowing for long-distance attacks against an enemy. Javelin throwing officially entered Olympic competition in the 1906 Olympic Games, which was held in Athens, Greece. In 1986, modifications were made to the men's javelin, and in 1999 to the women's javelin because the distances were becoming dangerously far. This change moved the center of pressure behind the center of gravity and forced thro throwers to change the angle of their release. With this change, the distances became shorter and did not pose as a threat to others in competition. Before the modifications were made, in 1999, the women's javelin record was held at 80 meters. The new record, however, is set at 72.28 meters, or 253 feet. Before the 1986 modification to the men's javelin, the world record was 104.4 meters, but the current world record under the new rules is 98.48 meters, or 323 feet. Here are some of the basics of javelin throwing. The javelin is held by the grip, which is in the middle of the javelin, which is also where the center of gravity is, which is where the weight of the object is concentrated. The center of pressure is the aerodynamic force of drag and lift. Although wind speed and direction will change the optimal angle of release, most throwers will throw with a 40 degree angle, causing more lift and flight. A complete throw of the javelin starts with the javelin being held above the shoulder as you start running. Then the javelin is pulled straight back with a straight arm and the thrower turns into a crow's hop and a plant step. Once the foot has been planted, the non-throwing arm pulls back and the upper body is twisted to face the landing area. The throwing arm then comes forward and releases the javelin at an angle close to 40 degrees. After release, it is important to continue forward motion to increase the velocity in the X direction, and to do this, you must follow through. The first element of physics in the javelin throw is projectile motion, which is an object in motion only under the force of gravity. In the javelin flight, the velocity in the x direction is held constant and it is important to get as much velocity in the x direction as possible to increase the distance that the javelin travels. The velocity in the y direction changes due to gravity with the general acceleration rate of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. It is also important not to have too much y velocity because it will produce too much height which takes away from the range. In this video, I was able to track the flight of the javelin using the video physics app which produced these graphs. From these graphs, I was able to determine the values of the x and y directions to be 10.3 and 7.6 meters per second. With these values, I calculated for the initial velocity using the vi squared equals vx squared plus the vy squared equation and found it to be 12.8 meters per second or 28.24 miles per hour. Then I was able to find the angle of release using the sine of the x and y velocities to be 36.3 degrees, which is very close to optimal angle of release. Another element of physics present in the javelin throw is torque, which is an influence which tends to change the rotational motion of an object. Before the release, throwers will do a crow's hop, which is a jump where your feet go faster and in front of your body. This creates torque because the upper body should still be back and turned away from the vector when the feet land. This converts linear motion to rotational. This then helps to release the javelin with more speed. A third element of physics in the javelin is momentum, which is mass times velocity. In the run-up, the thrower should start at a jog, accelerate into a sprint, and adjust into the crow hop before releasing still velocity in the javelin and momentum in the thrower. At the release, the thrower should have a solid block and explosive throw in addition to the already accelerating javelin. It is important not to lose momentum when you switch into the crow's hop because if you slow down too much, you will lose momentum which is transferred into the javelin's flight. These are most of the sources that I use while creating this project. Thank you for watching.